So what do you guys think? Is revolver technology dead? Are revolvers obsolete? Some say they are. I say they're not. Partially because I like revolvers. I have an affinity for them. I think they're a lot of fun. But I think it's chamberings like the 22 Magnum that really prove that the revolver is still a very relevant handgun. Unless you do away with the 22 Magnum and calibers like it, you're going to find that some things simply work a lot better in a revolver than they do in a semi-automatic. There are still some other advantages to revolvers too. One of the main ones is you have restrike capabilities on a round if you have a dud or one that doesn't go off, which is pretty common with rimfire ammunition. In fact, I had one happen during the course of testing this gun. Just once, but all I had to do was let it come around again, restrike it, and fire it. And revolvers are just plain fun. They're fun to shoot, they're fun to enjoy, they can almost be works of art. And they're pretty simplistic from a user's perspective, and they're a great way to introduce new shooters. So yeah, I think there's definitely a place in the world still for the revolver. And that brings me to this one that you see here. This is made by Alpha Proj or Alpha Project in the Czech Republic and it's imported to the United States. They've previously been imported to the US by other companies and they're now partnered with Rock Island Armory. This should be a win-win because the customers will probably be better served and the guns are more likely to become popular and better known. Nearly a year ago I took a look at the first RAA AL9 revolver from Alpha Proj and that was chambered in 9mm. Now let's look at a brand new offering in 22 Magnum. It expands the capacity to 8 rounds as you can do with a 22 caliber and it should be available in stainless steel like you see it here or a blued finish. In just about every other way it's the same gun with a different chambering. So let's get to it. Here's my initial look and review of the gun. Okay, we all know that pretty much every gun is more accurate than I'm able to shoot it. So with that spirit in mind, I'm going to go ahead and do some target shots here on paper. And I'm going to do it using this rest because this will help eliminate some of my inconsistencies and give me the best opportunity to show the way the gun performs. Now, one big caveat as I begin, I have not really tested the sights on this gun yet. I've done a little bit of shooting offhand with it and it looks like it's pretty well on, but I'm not exactly positive. So I'm going to start with the second row on the target. That'll leave me the most space around it if I'm off. If I have to make an adjustment, I will, but if the groups are on paper, I'm going to leave them where they hit. All right, I'm going to start out with the Arms Corps ammo. Arms Corps provided the ammo to help me do this test and evaluation, and I appreciate that. There's eight of those, and I can't really see that well that far away, but it looks like we are on the target, and that's good enough for what we're trying to do. I'm going to go now to some Winchester, a little Winchester white box, 22 mag. We'll do eight rounds of this. CCI Maxi Mag. Hornady. 
30 grain VMAX. Last target, bottom right. Okay, there's all four of the groups. They look pretty consistent. Uh, the one thing I notice is even with, you know, even giving the occasional flyer uh, and giving me credit for throwing a few, um, those groups are a little bit bigger than I would hope at this distance from a four inch barrel, but uh, still not terrible. And this one here looks promising. That's, that's very consistent right there. That one's really nice too if you take away that flyer. This revolver is almost identical in every way to the 9mm revolver that I told you about last year. But let's take a little break, listen to some music, and look at the specs. Okay, let's see how it does on a little bit of steel. I doubt it's going to move that flapper, but let's try it. At least we get a little bit of reaction. Almost. I'm going to take a second to answer a question I've gotten a bazillion times on other revolver videos. Why do you pull the trigger that extra time? Well, here's the reason I do it. I do it mainly because that's how I've done it all my life. That's how I was taught to do it, and I was taught the reason for it, and I agree with the reason for it. And here is that reason. <laughs> if you're shooting a semi-automatic 99 times out of 100, the slide's going to lock back after that last round. You know the gun's empty even though you still have to visually check and do all those things. With a revolver, if you lose count, I could maybe swear I shot eight rounds, but if I was busy talking to you while I was shooting, you've seen me lose count before. There's no guarantee that I don't have a live round 
in one of the chambers in the cylinder unless I do that to be sure. That way I know I have cycled all the way around and I'm empty. So that's the reason I do it. I'm not saying you have to do it. I'm not saying you don't have to do it. Okay, now the real test is always how well can I shoot the gun? So let's try some offhand, same distance. Got a fresh orange dot. If you see some holes below that on the target, that is from that other test. And I'm gonna go double action the way you would shoot a revolver. It's got a heavy double action trigger, but it does feel good. It's smooth. I don't feel stacking, and I don't really feel any grit. It's just heavy. And now I've lost count. There you go. This is a loner gun, by the way, from Rock Island Armory. It is slated to be released around the end of October. Right now, it's about the middle of October. So I've got a bit of a preview. Um, and whenever this video comes out, at that point, they've announced it. And hopefully, it should start to become available. I'm not affiliated with Rock Island Armory. They were, they're great folks uh, to deal with. And you know, it's, I love being able to get a hold of, of their product and review it. Um, but I can't answer any questions for you as far as when you're going to be able to see it on the shelves and things like that. But I would say, be patient. It is an import, so there, you can only import so many things at a time by law when it comes to firearms. Also, the times, <laughs> the times we're living in, uh, you know, so to, to just try and set your expectations, be patient. The orange insert on the front sight is nice, unless you're shooting at an orange dot. Then you kind of lose it a little bit. The AL-22M is comparable in size to a Smith & Wesson K-frame, and despite its heavy trigger, it's a good shooter because the pull is smooth and consistent. I commented before about the narrow hammer spur, and that might be one thing I'd like to see different. I do like a wider spur, especially for repeated single action target shooting. The lockup is very good. The cylinder fit is done to very tight tolerances. Mechanically, the gun is very sound, and no malfunctions or hiccups were encountered at all during the testing. Okay, I've been saying that the AL series is comparable in size to a Smith & Wesson K-frame, but let me show you that for comparison. So here is the Rock Island Armory AL-22M in stainless steel, and here is a Model 15 K-frame Smith & Wesson. And you can see they are very, very close in size, and if we put them this way for comparison, it might even give you a better look. And you can definitely see the resemblance in size. Of course, both have a four inch barrel in this particular case, but really we're looking at that frame size and everything is extremely similar. So very much like a K-frame for those of you who want to get a, a sense of the size of it. All right, let me just tell you what I like and maybe what I don't like as I uh, take a few more shots here. I like the sights. I think they are very good. Like I say, the orange dot is a little tricky when you're shooting against something orange, but that makes sense, right? The rear sight is adjustable, which is nice. And it seems to be pretty good right now. I don't feel like I need to adjust it much. Certainly not for this review. I like the way the rounds go. Uh, flush fit in the cylinder. That's a nice touch. Double action trigger is long and it's heavy. That's by design, but it's very smooth. Like I said, not, not, no dirt, no grit, no stacking. Uh, it feels very good. So I like that, but it is long and it is heavy. So if you don't like a heavy double action pull, 
you're probably not going to like that too much. The single action, and I still have empty cartridges in here, so it's okay to dry fire. The single action is also not exactly what I would call light. It's in the five to six pound range, but very crisp. And it feels like it's probably lighter than that. I might put a gauge on that. If you're a Smith & Wesson guy or gal, um, I say gal because, you know, three and a half percent of the people who watch my videos are women. But if you, if you like Smith & Wessons, you're going to like the way the cylinder release latch has been designed because it is very Smith & Wesson-esque. It has the same rubber grip that the other revolver has, the, uh, the AL-9. So I like that on that gun and I like it on this gun too. It, makes, it just makes a nice grip. Um, it's kind of a no frills, no fuss kind of thing, but very effective and it's got a very nice texture. Basically, it's, it's, it's like lots of little, I don't know, it's just, it's just like lots of little raised dots, you know, uh, all over the surface of the rubber grip but it does a very nice job of grabbing hold of your skin uh, without feeling at all uncomfortable. It does have finger grooves, so if you don't like finger grooves, um, then that, again, that's something else you probably wouldn't care for. Fit and finish is good on this pistol, but it's not necessarily American, you know, best quality fit and finish. You can see tool marks here and there, but very sparingly and usually in the out of the way places like you've got to open the cylinder or pull the hammer back or things like that before you're going to see those kinds of things but you can see where a little bit of money was saved here and there you know where the cast parts are and, and such but overall the polish is very nice on the stainless steel the ribbing at the top of the barrel is good quality it's got a very nice crown on the barrel. I think that was a very nice touch. This is definitely one that you can use all your life and then pass down to your kids or your grandkids and they can use it all their lives. Uh, it's definitely, definitely built. So there you go. There's a, I hope, meaningful and informative first look for you at this Rock Island Armory import. So by the time this video is out, the gun should be released if that's something you're interested in. Um, like I said, I'm not going to try and speculate on availability and all that kind of stuff. But, you know, if it's something you're interested in, you know where to look. I mean, all the normal, all the normal places you would look for a gun. So, um, this, is not, uh, this is not a marketing or a promotion video. It's a review, so I'm not going to tell you where you should go to buy it. I guess the last thing is 22 Magnum. What, what's it for? I've never shot a lot of 22 Magnum. You know, I've shot 22 long rifle all my life, you know, and, uh, and, and stuff, but I've always been more of a center fire caliber type of person. But when it comes to the argument about, especially 22 long rifle, you know, there's always the discussion of whether 22 right, long rifle can, can be used with any kind of legitimacy at all for a defense, a uh, defensive handgun. Um, and you know, I'm certainly not going to have that argument about 22 long rifle, but with 22 Magnum, I think the argument takes on a different aspect because 22 Magnum is a much more powerful round than 22 long rifle. It's the same projectile for all intents and purposes, the same lightweight bullet, and the same you know caliber, obviously, but it's traveling so much faster. And we all know velocity is king because velocity is energy. So that energy being transformed downrange is significant in a 22 Magnum as compared to a 22 long rifle. I am not a ballistics expert. I don't pretend to be one, and I'm not going to try and come off like I know more than I do. Uh, but 22 Magnum, for the research I've done, which has not been deep or thorough, but the research I've done, 22 Magnum is really on par with 380 ACP in many ways. Now I'm sure you can point out examples in both cases, you know, in, in either direction to prove me right or prove me wrong. Uh, so I'm not trying to be right or wrong, but I think that if you're okay with a 380 ACP as a personal defense caliber, then I think 
you might be okay with a 22 Magnum. And hey, thanks as always for watching. I appreciate your support with your views and your likes. If you don't already subscribe, please do so. And don't be afraid to stomp on that like button. It does help the channel. Don't forget to support the folks that are supporting me whenever you get a chance. And if you want to support me more directly, I'm on Patreon. You can find me there. Thank you.